fire versus ice, an age-old rivalry. And for Mortal Kombat fans, this rivalry takes the shape of Ninja Warriors, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion, two characters who just can't seem to get along. But in a game all about fighting, who wouldn't want them to? While the pair are natural enemies, their hatred for each other has actually been puppeteered by a manipulative sorcerer. So how did it begin? And is it ever going to end? Let's find out. The entire concept of Mortal Kombat is, as the name suggests, fighting. Characters are constantly battling each other, but it isn't all about who the player wants to fight. There's a lot of lore behind these characters' motivations to participate in the tournaments. And while all the characters have the potential to be enemies, there's one rivalry that's particularly iconic. The one between Sub-Zero and Scorpion. But Mortal Kombat is on its 11th game now, so it can be hard to figure out where this rivalry began and if it ever really ended. So let's dig into it a bit. Back in 1992, the first Mortal Kombat game set up an interesting fantasy world containing realms that are able to be conquered. The Elder Gods decided that rules would be needed to keep the realms from going to war and absorbing each other. They proclaimed that conquering and merging can only be done by invoking Mortal Kombat. So every generation, a fighting tournament occurs and the winner doesn't age until the next tournament. If the invaders win 10 consecutive tournaments, they can officially take over the realm. In the process, Sub-Zero and Scorpion were pitted against each other, and it was all courtesy of the cunning sorcerer Quan Chi. Quan Chi needed to track down a magical amulet in order to release Shinnok from the Netherrealm. Needing help, he hired two ninja assassin groups. Sub-Zero, whose real name is Bi Han, was a representative of the Lin Kuei assassin group, while Scorpion, whose real name is Hanzo Hasashi, represented the Shirai Ryu group. This is where the rivalry between the two was really set into motion, but it ended up getting a lot more complicated than a simple treasure hunt. Sub-Zero is known for his freezing abilities, while Scorpion is known for his control of Hellfire, so really the two were set out to be enemies from the beginning. When Sub-Zero and Scorpion ended up fighting over the map to the amulet, Sub-Zero decided to end their rivalry as soon as it had begun. His powers came out on top and he won the fight, but then he chose to unnecessarily eliminate Scorpion, ending the possibility that the two would have to go head to head in the future, or so he thought. Quan Chi decided to take things a step further and really rub Scorpion's defeat in his undead face. The sorcerer repaid the Lin Kuei by having Scorpion's entire family and clan destroyed. Now that his enemy and rival clan were annihilated, Sub-Zero was tasked with finally tracking down the amulet. He did so and Quan Chi took it to the Nether Realm. In Sub-Zero's next mission, he was sent to take part in Mortal Kombat, but Sub-Zero's days of victory were pretty much near a close. While Sub-Zero was busy on his mission to assassinate Shang Tsung, Scorpion was back from the grave. Quan Chi found Scorpion in the Nether Realm and showed him a false reality of Sub-Zero taking out his clan and family. Then, Quan Chi offered him some unresistible vengeance on Sub-Zero. He even gave Scorpion some new intense powers, including demon summoning and resurrection. With Quan Chi once again pulling the strings, Scorpion was officially out to get his revenge on Sub-Zero. During the tournament, Scorpion's Hellfire came out on top and now Sub-Zero was the one eliminated. That should have finally been the end of things. But it's Mortal Kombat, so the fighting wasn't about to stop there. Sub-Zero ended up being reborn in the Nether Realm as Noob Saibot. He became sinister sorcerer Quan Chi's soldier without Scorpion knowing. The Puppet Master was still at it, but all of Sub-Zero's human qualities were gone now, leaving a ruthless monster of a man behind in their wake. But luckily there was another Sub-Zero to pick up the original's mantle. Bi Han's younger brother Kwai Long took up the name to investigate what happened to his brother. Scorpion took out his frustrations on this new Sub-Zero at first, until he realized that this was his enemy's brother and really, he had nothing to do with why they were fighting. In a shocking turn of events, Scorpion became the new Sub-Zero's protector. But did you really think that would fly with Quan Chi? The sneaky sorcerer wasn't done being manipulative. He convinced Scorpion that the new Sub-Zero was responsible for eliminating Scorpion's family. Scorpion and Sub-Zero battled and Sub-Zero was gravely injured. Now Quan Chi could finally show his true colors. He wanted to take out Sub-Zero himself, so he admitted he had been playing Puppet Master this whole time and tried to banish Scorpion to the Nether Realm. But Scorpion wasn't having it. He lunged at Quan Chi to grab him and bring him down to the Nether Realm at the same time. From there, Scorpion went after Quan Chi on his own. He broke into his stronghold but was overwhelmed and thrown into Shang Tsung's soul nado. His body was ripped to shreds, but that's not technically a cannon, so don't worry, he came back for more. Meanwhile, the new Sub-Zero wanted to take over the Lin Kuei. He defeated the old Grandmaster and became the group's more powerful leader. In Mortal Kombat X, 20 years had passed since the Netherrealm War. During that time, Sub-Zero and Scorpion have made up, and their newest priority was making Quan Chi suffer. Scorpion eventually beheads the sorcerer, bringing his manipulative days to a close. Of course, Mortal Kombat has a few different timelines, plus both television and movie adaptations. 
So there are some great areas and non-canon events that make Sub-Zero and Scorpion's rivalry a whole lot more complicated, but it boils down to the fact that Quan Chi was the antagonist for the entire thing. While Scorpion and Sub-Zero were already natural enemies, their battles wouldn't have been quite so dark without Quan Chi's meddling. So who really comes out on top when it comes to Sub-Zero and Scorpion? Each of them has won before and proven themselves to be stronger than the other. With the old Sub-Zero technically still eliminated and his brother taking up the name, it's easy to assume that that makes Scorpion the winner. But remember that Scorpion lost too and is technically undead, so really, who's stronger? We want to know your thoughts on this, so drop them down below in the comments. In the television series, Mortal Kombat Conquest, the whole rivalry between the two started quite differently. Scorpion took Sub-Zero's sister's life, then the two of them duke it out for a while, realizing that their powers are a pretty even match. The fight eventually concludes when Sub-Zero starts winning and Scorpion is forced to flee. The fight is mostly hand-to-hand -hand combat, probably to stick to a decent television budget. But it does give us a bit of an idea of how a fight between the two would end up. We know they'll probably keep coming back again and again in the games, but in the television and movie adaptations, anything can happen. In the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie, there was definitely not enough of Sub-Zero or Scorpion. We didn't even get to see their rivalry on screen. Screen. But that doesn't mean our dreams of seeing Sub-Zero and Scorpion duke it out cinematically have to be over. A new Mortal Kombat movie is coming out in 2021, and it'll feature both of the iconic characters as well as, wait for it, realistic R-rated on-screen fatalities. That's enough to get any Mortal Kombat fan excited, since it'll be the first time we get to see hyper-realistic fatalities on the big screen. Hiroyuki Sanada, known for appearances in Wolverine and Avengers Endgame, as well as portraying the character Dogen in Lost, has been cast in the film as Scorpion. As for Sub-Zero, Joe Taslim, who has had roles in The Raid Redemption and The Fast and Furious 6, will be tasked with bringing the Ninja Warrior to life. But good acting isn't enough to do these characters justice. A great story is also needed. We're not sure yet if they're going to go the canon route and have Quan Chi involved in the rivalry, or if the pair will even have a rivalry at all. But there are a few hints that tell us there will be some new action between Sub-Zero and Scorpion in the film. First of all, producer James Wan, known for The Conjuring and Aquaman, signed on to the project back in 2015 and finally got the ball rolling on the film. He promised fans that the movie wasn't going to be rushed. Instead, Wan wanted to focus on doing the video games justice, which means that there won't be any tiptoeing around the violence for this film. It will include x-rays and crushing blows in addition to the fatal finishing moves. But most importantly, Wan says that the movie will bring some much needed justice to Sub-Zero and Scorpion. This means that their interactions with each other could be a lot more similar to the video games, but maybe with a bit more dialogue and emotional depth. But really what matters most is the fighting. Will we be seeing Scorpion's harpoon? His signature GET OVER HERE! yelled out at max volume? And how will Sub-Zero's deep freeze look on the big screen? These are all questions that have yet to be answered, but we'll be keeping our eyes out for the eventual release of the film's first official trailer. Look, all we can know for sure is that the rivalry isn't really over. Even if the pair made some amends in the video game series, that doesn't mean that they'll be friends in all the other Mortal Kombat adaptations still to come. Mortal Kombat is one of the most profitable franchises in the entire world. If Sub-Zero and Scorpion's rivalry helps fuel the hunger for more, then the pair aren't about to get a moment of peace. Mortal Kombat has been scheduled for an official January 15, 2021 release date. There are no trailers or official images from set, but that's just making all of us more excited for our first real look at the reboot. With the series finally making fatalities and x-rays live action, and planning to properly utilize Sub-Zero and Scorpion, we're being cautiously optimistic about how awesome this movie could be. As for the overall tone of the movie, we'll definitely see some horror elements and gore, so expect the film to at least get the fighting as accurate as possible. In fact, some of the main cast members are stunt performers, this might not bode so well for the acting aspect, but at least we know the action is going to be on point. Mortal Kombat will actually mark the first non-horror picture from Atomic Monster Productions, so they aren't scared to get bloody with a video game property. So will Sub-Zero and Scorpion settle the rivalry on the big screen for once and for all? Not likely, but honestly, we wouldn't have it any other way. Who do you think is the rivalry's rightful winner, Sub-Zero or Scorpion? Do you hope the new Mortal Kombat movie sticks with the video games as an inspiration? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to CBR. Thanks for watching and see you next time.